ஓம் நமோ வெங்கடேசாய சுக்லாம்பரதரம் விஷ்ணு சசிவர்ணம் சதுர்புஜம் பிரசன்னவதனம் தியாய சர்வவிக்னோபாந்தே வியாசாய விஷ்ணுபாய வியாசூபாய விஷ்ணவே நமோ வை பிரம்மனிதே வாசிஷ்டாய நமோ நம ஸ்மரணமாத்திரேன ஜன்ம சம்சார பந்தநாத் விமுச்சதே நமஸ்தஸ்மே விஷ்ணவே பிரபு விஷ்ணவே லட்சுமிநாத சமாரம்பாம் நாத்தே அமுன மத்தியமாமஸ்மதாச்சாரிய பரியந்தம் வந்தே குரு பரம்பராம் வார்த்தாய பிரதிபோதிதாம் பகவதா நாராயணேனஸ்வயம் வியாசேனிதாம் புராண முனி மத்தியே மகாபாரதம் அத்வைதாமிரதவர்ஷிணீம் பகவதீம் அஷ்டாதசாத்தியாயினீம் அம்பத்வாமனுசந்தாமி பகவத்கீதே பவத்வேஷிணிம் வசுதே வசுதம் தேவம் கம்சாணூரமர்தனம் தேவகீ பரமானந்தம் கிருஷ்ணம் வந்தே ஜகத்குரு ஓம் நமோ வெங்கடேசாயம் எப்பநாம் சிவரிபடியும் சோ வி ஆர் மூவிங் ஆன் டு சாப்டர் டென் ஆஃப் தி பகவத்கீதா விச் இஸ் கால்ட் அஸ் தி விபூதி யோகா சோ Bhuti, Bhuti, as per the Samara Kosham, that means it is Aishwaryam. That means Bhagavan's uh, Aishwaryam, one meaning of Aishwaryam is Ishwaratham. That means ability to uh, control over everything. That is one meaning of Aishwaryam. Other Aishwaryam also means wealth. So Bhagavan's the greatest wealth. The, all the, the entire world belongs to him and therefore is, uh, is the, that is what is Visesha Bhuti. That means the special wealth of Bhagavan is what is being described in this chapter called Vibhuti Yoga. Now if you take this chapter 10 and 11 together, There is this famous uh, Upanishadic mantra in this uh, Isa Vasya Upanishad. Yastu sarvani bhutani atmanyevanu paschati sarva bhuteshu chatmanam tatona vijigupse. That means a person who is able to see atman, atman or the self or the paramatma. Yastu sarvani atmani, yastu sarvani atmani, yastu sarvani bhutani atmanyeva paschati. That means one is able to see everything in himself in Bhagavan. and in everything else he sees bhagwan so that means one in many and many in one so the chapter 10 is the one in the many and chapter 11 is many in the one that is the vishwarupa darshan so that is what it is in fact the word narayana itself has these two meanings narayana mayanam narayana that means one who is the goal of all this jiva all the jivatmas everyone and the, the inner things everything that means the one the many in the one that's what it is referred to. that's one meaning of that narahayanam yasya sah narayana that means one uh, the naras all this jivatma all this inner things are the or the goal that means is the inner control that means the person who is present in everything that is also the meaning of narayana so bhagwan is going to talk about the one in the many in this vibhuti yogam so let's move on to shloka number 1 directly atha dashamo dhyayah om shri paramatmane namaha atha dashamo dhyayah ீவாச்ச பூய மகாபாஹோ சுணு மே பரமம் வச்சேகம் பிரியமாய வக்ஷியாமிஹிதாமியாசிஸ்மைட்டிஷோல்டர்ஸ்ஜனாஸ்மைட்டிஷோல்டர்ஸ்ஜனாஸ்மைட்டிஷோல்டர்ஸ்
prabhavam that means my complete you know the opulences they don't know me maharsha even the rishis even the rishis as well as the devadas do not know my complete opulences they don't know me completely that's what he's saying they may know a little bit of here and there a little bit of things but nobody knows me including the rishis and the devadas they don't know me completely aham bhi adihi that means i am because i am the person who has been present right from the beginning that means i am the i am the earliest person That means Deva Nam, Rishi Nam, just that means I am the earliest, but I was even much earlier than the Rishis, much earlier than the Devatas, and therefore they do not know me completely. So that means when somebody is pre- not present during a point of time when Bhagwan is there, that means they won't know the completeness of the Bhagwan as such. That's what he is trying to say. Since I am the Adi, that means I am the I have been there right from the beginning, even at the time of Pralaya, I was existent. But when the whole world, the whole universe, the fourteen lokas and the Brahmaandam, nothing existed. I was the only person who was existing. and therefore the rishis or the devatas or anybody do not know me completely so that means that's why they know, even if they if you think that you know somebody has told you about me somebody has told me etc they are told only bits and portions of it nobody has understood me completely and that's why i am going to talk to you about myself completely to you that's what he is going trying to say in the second shloka okay third shloka yo ma majamana dincha veti loka maheshwaram you know so i'm born, I, when we say my i'm born on so and so year or something like that that means prior to that period of time i was not existent so that's why that's why i say that uh, i'm born so bhagwan is ana unborn means that means there was no period of time when he was not there so the question of he being born doesn't arise at all it arises for a person who didn't exist for a, at a point of time so since he was existent all but that is why it's called a sat sat means existing in all periods of time in the past in the present and the future in all periods of time so So Bhagwan said, "I am. They know me as Ajam. Ajam is who know is not born. Then we all of us will have this question. No? Then we we, we we celebrate the Janma Ashtami. We celebrate this, you know, this Ram Nami and so on. So that means Bhagwan is born also. He was only born for a particular cause at the point of time, and not like any of us being born. We are being born on account of our karmas and vasanas. But Bhagwan is born. Uh, the Bhagwan himself. We are already saw in the chapter four. He says." यदा यदा ही धर्म से ग्लानित भवति भारत है अभ्युत्थान में धर्म से सदात मानस होते हैं नेवर देर इस डिक्लाइन ऑफ धर्मा आई टेक प्रकृति में स्वाम अधिष्ठाय संभव आमी आत्मा माया आई टेक द माया एस मी टूल एंड गेट एंड गेट इनकॉर्नेट माय सेल्फ इन दिस यूनिवर्स फॉर द पर्पस ऑफ रीएस्टेब्लिशिंग धर्म दैट इज व्हाट इज इज कॉल्ड इज अवतार इज नॉट इवन कॉल्ड एज भगवान इज नॉट कॉल्ड एज बर्थ इट इज ओनली एन अवतार अवतार अति अवतार मींस टू कम डाउन सो दैट मींस फ्रॉम हिज सुप्रीम पोजीशन ऑफ बीइंग अनबोर्न ही इज कमिंग टू द सिचुएशन ऑफ बीइंग एज इफ ही इज बीइंग बोर्न as if he is born with this particular type of body or something like that so that's what it is called an aja he is not born so even when he is born he is not born like any one of us like you know because of his our karma vasha or as well as because of some unfulfilled desires that's why we are for a person to be born in this world he must have two reasons one is he must have had certain desires which has not been fulfilled and number two there are certain karmas which have not been the effect of that karma the, the fruits of the karmas have not been uh they, they they have not started yielding the results and therefore he has got to be born to to uh, to you know this uh, experience the fruits of the actions that he has done in the past we all know that you no know, whenever uh, the, i mean so i'll give an example of how our birth takes place supposing if i am uh, i mean yeah, i'm living i'm born in this world so i have got certain obsession towards united states of america so i said i must somehow go to united states of america it is being talked of as you know the beautiful the paradise on the earth etc 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 then unfortunately during my lifetime that desire is not fulfilled but that has gone as a deep you know craving in my mind so at the time of death as we saw in chapter 8 also all these desires manifest so the deepest desire that is the the greatest craving that comes as the first first desire so therefore supposing if my that desire was born to be go to united states was my deepest desire then that manifests at the time of my death and therefore the next birth will be determined the bhagwan says yes your next birth is in united states of america or you have got something to do with united states of america that's that that much is clear but then whether i am born in this place in a, in a you know multi millionaires palace or I'm, i have to slog my work i mean i have to uh, live in a place which is about 50 miles away and so i got to commute every day 
by you know tube or whatever it is so that means that kind of a uh, the comfort or the thing is determined by my karmas if the karmas are good then i'll get born in a beautiful family with uh, with rolls rice cause and all those things but supposing the karma is not good then i get uh, i got to be in some other different place i'll have to commute every day so, you know slog myself and all those things so this is this is the nature of our birth whereas bhagwan's birth is not because of any of these karmas or vasanas and his uh, his purpose is only for re establishing dharma and he decides where to be born who who the son of so and so so and so etc and he always bo is born with a silver spoon in the tongue that's what they say you know like he is born in a royal uh, royal play place with all this you know requirements i mean even though krishna was uh, born in a uh, in a prison ultimately that same night he was taken to this gokula where the nanda baba was the chieftain of that place so all this these royal opulences are always there so that is why he is called it even though he is born is not born like any one of us and therefore it's called a sajam but like that's what the the purusha sukham says ajaya mano bahuda vijayate ajaya mano the person who is not born takes multiple births multiple births only for the sake of establishing the dharma so that's what he is saying bhagwan is saying ajam mam ajam anadim adim means beginning that means he doesn't have a beginning at all again why when there's something as a beginning that means there was a point of time when he did not exist then only there's a beginning and there is uh, when he was there is no time when he was not there that means there is no question of adi also there is no beginning also and that means called as anadi mam ajam anadi cha veti loka maheshram so i am the lord of this entire lokas the 14 lokas the entire brahmandam i am the lord of this entire universe a person who understands me like that sammod asammodah that means he is he is a very wise person moda means unwise uh, that is uh, a person with a dull intellect so that means some modam one is with that uh, with that dull intellect some modam opposite of that a person who is not uh, uh, dull witted but a, but a person who is very intelligent and has got a good uh, uh, good understanding some modam has uh, that person martyeshu that means among all this you know this uh, this uh, this jivatmas sarva papaihi that means he is completely get promoted that means he gets completely re get rid of all this papas that means all his sins get completely washed off a person who thinks of me as ajam unborn then anadim that is who has got a who doesn't have any beginning and i am the lord of this entire universe a person completely understands me like this that person gets relieved of all his sins that's what he say let's move on to shloka number 4 4 and 5 Buddhir... take it together 4 and 5 okay guruji buddhir jnanam sammoha shama satyam dama shamah sukham dukham bhavo bhavah भयम भयम अहिंसा समता तुष्टि तपोदान यशो यश भवंति भावा भूता मत एव पृथग्विधा everything he is saying mattayeva prathakvitaha that is all these things have come from me only mattayeva from me only so they have all come from me only in different forms prathakvitaha that means in a different different ways so what are the things that has come from him buddhihi buddhihi means intelligence jnanam knowledge two things are different buddhi is different from knowledge if we all understand so buddhi is the intellect or the intelligence and then the knowledge is the, the speculative knowledge that we have what is retained in the mind is the buddhi asammoha so that means that means one is free from delusion delusion is thinking something uh, thinking of something which is uh, different from its real nature is called as moha so that means we all think this body is imperishable and therefore that is moham once you understand the body is perishable and atma is imperishable that is some asammoha that means you are free from delusion understanding the things as they are freedom from this uh, delusion kshama kshama is patience and forgiveness so forgiveness that is uh, that's also another quality satyam satyam being truthfulness damaha damaha means control of the sense organs that is the the the, the what is panchabhut the panchanyanendriyas no the eyes the ears the nose the tongue as well as the the skin the, the sense of touch these are called nyanendriyas damaha means one has got gain control over the sense organs is called as damaha shamaha control of the mind so the mind is the controller of all the sense organs one has got the control over the mind the two things are different shamaha and damaha are slightly, slightly different a person who has got shama shama means control over the mind he doesn't have to worry about dhamma because the mind itself will control the sense organs a person who doesn't have shama that means he doesn't have control over the mind he has got excesses control over the over the sense organs i i think i given this example earlier i'll once again repeat that for example a child is very much fond of ice cream 
that means the, the child doesn't have any control over the mind because being a child child a very small child don't have much control over the you know the, the mind they don't have that capacity to think what is good for them and therefore they won't have much control over their mind so supposing if the child is so much interested in the ice cream and the child has fallen sick so uh, the, the mother wants to take the child to the doctor so when on the way to the doctor there is an ice cream parlor on the way so mother will try to avoid the ice cream parlor area and go to go, go through a different route to the doctor's place why because the child doesn't have control over the mind supposing if the child had control over the mind it will understand no i'm sick i should not take ice cream if i take ice cream then i'll get much more sick so the, the child doesn't have that kind of a control over the mind and therefore the moment it sees the uh, the ice cream parlor immediately it will get attracted and would like to have the ice cream so that means the, that is what is called as dhamma you get away from that objects of the sense organ that is called as dhamma if you control over the mind itself that is called as shamaha sukham happiness dukham sorrow bhavaha that means one is being born birth abhavaha death opposite of that the birth death bhayam fear abhayam fearlessness ahimsa ahimsa means non violence samataha samata means equanimity equilibrium tushtihi tushti means completely satisfied tapaha penance dhanam charity yashaha fame ayashaha that means infirmity bhavanti all come out of come out of this uh, bhavaha that means bhutanam all this all this natures of this, this all the living entities the natures of the living entities all these things come from matta eva pratag pratag vidah all these things come out of me where they are being arranged in a different way so it is all these pairs of opposites all these things that are happening in this world entire thing which are the nature of this all the living entities have all come from me only so that's what bhagwan is slowly talking about his greatness his opulences and that's what the, this you know, this particular you know this uh, uh, yoga is vibhuti yoga and therefore bhagwan is saying everything has come from me only that's what he's saying so i think we'll continue the discussion tomorrow Thank you, Guruji. Pasme vasutam devam kamsa chanura mardhanam devaki paramanandam krishnam vande jagat gurum sarvam shri krishna arpnamastu krishna 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 krishna.